you have dreams of being a flower farmer, but you don't have a lot of money to invest. And let's face it, you probably don't have a lot of land to grow on either. So what's a wannabe flower farmer to do? Well, I've got the solution for you. Hi, my name is Kristen with Shifting Roots, and I help people in cold climates and short growing seasons grow vegetables and flowers with ease. If you wanna see my growing season in real time and what I do exactly when, you can follow me on Instagram. So if you're like me, you're probably crazy about cut flowers and you really wanna grow them and maybe even start selling them and doing this as a side hustle. But if you're also like me, you only live in the city in a small city lot, or maybe you don't have much land to work with and you probably don't wanna invest a ton of money when you don't know if flower farming is actually for you or if you can even make money off of it. So in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I decided to do for myself on a small scale, why I think it's a fabulous idea and maybe how it can work for you. So when you're starting up a traditional flower farm, you kind of assume that maybe you're on an acreage or a farm of somewhere you have a lot of land to work with. So that in itself is a huge investment. Then you also have to invest in a whole bunch of perennials, tulip bulbs, gladiolus bulbs, dahlias, like let's not even get started on dahlias. It's so easy to go crazy with them. Not to mention annual seeds. It could be really easy to rack up $5,000 without even trying just in your plant costs on that traditional model. That's not even thinking about say, things like irrigation, extra soil that you might have to purchase for soil health, weed fabric, creating your own website. There are so many expenses that flower farming isn't that cut and dried, easy, get rich quick scheme that you thought it might be. So even though for me, I think that would be an incredible goal to work towards someday, what I'm doing right now is I'm growing a cut flower farm on a very small scale. My garden is about, I would say 12 feet by 16 feet. And then I also have some raised flower beds on different parts of the yard that I can also grow extra flowers in. And each of those are three feet by five feet. And I have probably about, I have about six of those available to me as well. Now you might think that's a really small space to grow flowers in. And can you even make any money off of that? Well, you, for one, you would be surprised how many flowers I'm able to grow. Last year when I created my flower garden, I actually discovered that I was, even though I had improved upon my garden from the year previous, I still had a lot of wasted space and I didn't quite still have the exact right mix of flowers um, for making bouquets. So I could have had a lot less of the same type of fillers, I could have squished more dahlias into there. I had way too much calendula and I definitely could have grown more green things. But even with all of these mistakes, I was still able to get anywhere from three to 10 bouquets out of my garden a week. And I think if I had cut even more aggressively, you have to remember now that I'm gardening for slightly different purposes because I run a blog. And so I'll often cut less flowers than a traditional cut farmer would cut because I need to have more of my flowers open for pictures. But if I was cutting like a true flower farmer, I'm sure I could even get 15 bouquets a week out of my garden if I really needed to. With those amount of bouquets, maybe selling your bouquets for anywhere from 15 to $30 per bouquet. Sure, it's not enough to feed your family, but it is enough to cover your costs and save up for something extra. The other benefit of having a much smaller garden is that you might not need to even run an irrigation system. You could probably just collect rainwater and water exclusively from that. If you forego the perennial flowers and stick to annual seed flowers, you'll have your initial seed cost bill I'm thinking that my initial bill of seeds cost me maybe around like $300 to $400, but then I seed saved as much as possible and then my cost next year is substantially lower. There's also so much less risk doing it this way because if I have a crop that fails in my small garden, I'm not losing nearly as much money than someone who's invested all the land and time and extra money that comes with just having a larger space to work with. I'm also not wearing myself thin. Now this year I did have a baby, so obviously like it was a lot harder to garden, but in a normal year, my size of garden is 
easily achievable by your average gardener who's in like decent health and doesn't have super, super small kids. The other nice thing about this size is that I can't supply a florist with it. So there's no pressure, right? Like in my system, I'm basically just making enough bouquets for me to maybe throw on my Facebook page or my Instagram page saying, hey, I have these five bouquets available for sale today. Here are the pictures, DM me if you wanna purchase. That is by far the easiest way to like dip your toe into sales and even see if your sales are viable because when you only have five bouquets for sale, if they don't sell, it's not the end of the world. Or if two of them sell, it's okay. You're still doing market research and figuring out what people in your area want. But again, you're just not losing a ton of money or, or having a bunch of debt. A garden this size also gives you a chance to figure out what your flower formula is. Because at first you're gonna be tempted to basically plant everything in every single color. And some of it will go together and some of it won't go together. And you still sort of have to figure that out. And when you're planting on a larger scale, it's so much easier to have a formula where you know that you have 10 zinnias and three things of feverfew and one sunflower and I don't know, three things of mint and that's your bouquet. And then you just make a bunch of them. When you mess those things up on a large scale, it's just gonna cost you so much more time and money and stress. But if you messed up on a smaller scale, sure, it's stressful and you did spend time and money, but it's not nearly as much. And then someday, when you're able to actually buy land and flower farm on a much larger scale, you'll have figured out all of those things already so that when you get to the big place, you're just ready to go and you're ready to make money and you will be so much more efficient. If you wanna know exactly how I create my small space flower garden and how I plant everything so that there's, I have bouquets that'll look good, they have enough of the right mix of the hero flowers and the fillers and the greens and everything like that. If you wanna know about seed saving and just sort of how to put this all together, but you don't wanna spend money on a course that costs like 500 or a thousand or even more dollars, I have come up with just a very simple set of ebooks. There are four ebooks. I call them my serious side hustle bundle. And basically, all it is is just four ebooks that'll walk you through the basics. This bundle is really affordable, and I'll just basically walk you through how to set up that little small scale cut flower garden with all the right flowers that you need to plant. Then the seed saving book shows you how to save the seeds from most of what you planted. The bouquets made beautiful book will help you throw those bouquets together and make them look good so that people actually want to buy what you want to sell. Because contrary to popular belief, it's not easy to just throw something together and have it look amazing. Lots of people go to cut their bouquets, put something together and wonder why it just seems to fall flat. With Bouquets Made Beautiful, you're not gonna have that problem. And finally, if you live in a cold climate like I do, the Frost Proof Flower Garden will help you figure out how to extend your flower garden into the colder shoulder seasons so that you can sell for longer. And maybe some of the people who are also growing flowers in your area don't grow these flowers, so you can offer something unique and set yourself apart in your marketing. So I'm just gonna put a link below in the description. The bundle looks like this. If you have any questions about very, very small scale flower farming, dipping your toe into the water, make sure you pop them below in the comments. I hope this video has helped you and that it'll be a great stepping stone onto your journey of flower farming. So hit subscribe and like if you want more content about cold climate, short season gardening, especially for cut flowers. It's one of my favorite things to grow and you're gonna be able to see on YouTube everything that I'm doing in my own cut flower garden this year and how I'm preparing to eventually, hopefully, move up to a larger cut flower garden. We'll see you in the next video, bye.